Good morning, guys. Um, sorry, I uh, don't look the part. Uh, I just biked up to the Apache Summit and I came down 50 miles. So uh, <laughs> I, I haven't uh, taken a shower or anything. Um, but today, uh, today I wanted to um, to talk about this verse that I was reading. I'm sorry, it's um, August the 14th. Today I wanted to talk about this verse I was reading uh, this week. Obviously not today, because I just just got back from my ride. Uh, but uh, it was, I believe it was yesterday. It's in Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1. It says this, When you go out to war against your enemies and see horses and chariots and an army larger than your own, you shall not be afraid of them, for the Lord your God is with you, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Now, let me kind of give a little bit of context here, okay? So there were this, these people, Israel, they were slaves in a place... Uh, called Egypt, which I'm sure many of you guys are aware of, um, and then there, then God used this guy uh, whose name was Moses to lead them out of out of slavery um, and into uh, Canaan, which was going to become their land. Now Moses ended up dying, and so Joshua picks up with um, with with him leading uh, with Joshua leading the people into Canaan. Now, Deuteronomy is kind of like the last thing that Moses wrote before he died. So uh, here he is, um, you know, giving just a few a few last things before he before he dies, and he's talking not to the not to the people that he led out of captivity, but actually to their children. So this is not the people that the same people who were alive when God. Um, and God freed them from, from slavery. But if you notice to what he just said, I'll read it again. When you go out to war against your enemies and see horses and chariots and an army larger than your own, you shall not be afraid of them. Hold on, right here. For the Lord your God is with you. Okay, all right. Who brought you up out of the land of Egypt? But once again, remember, these are not the people who God brought out of the land of Egypt. It was their parents. So so what's being said here? What is what is What is... What is God through Moses trying to, trying to tell us? Well, I think the first thing that's extremely that that was not that that wasn't a fart. It was my chair. I swear. Um, um, uh, the first thing that I think God is trying to tell us through Moses is that it's the same God. See, He says, when you go out in the future and you're fighting all these guys, remember that I am, I am with you. Okay. And this is what I did in the past. I brought you out of the land of Egypt. So I, I'm the same God. I haven't gone anywhere. I'll still be with you in the future as I am with you right now as I led you all out. So then there's another thing that I think is being said, and I think that's this. So the first thing that I think God is saying is that it's the same God. He's the same God. He didn't change. He didn't get weaker. He didn't forget. The same guy, okay? Then the second thing... When God acts, he also thinks about those yet to come. Like, for instance, when Jesus died on the cross, who was God thinking of? Well, he was thinking about the people who were alive then, but also he was thinking about us today and all the other people that will be saved after us when, when we're dead in the ground and, and God's still continuing his work. So I think that that's kind of a, kind of a big point there too. When God acts, He also thinks about those yet to come. What we like to do is we want God to do exactly right now as we want Him to do, in a specific way that we want, not necessarily what's best or what um, fulfills a bigger picture, or uh, what would um, make what would fulfill God's plans for people's life. We don't really care about that stuff. We just want um, what we want, and we want it now. And when God acts, He's not just thinking about the the, the immediate actions and and what that what that's going to affect. He also thinks about the people afterwards who it's going to affect, the the people who come later, maybe people who aren't even alive yet. He he's he he doesn't just oh I I didn't see that one coming coming out. You know he. He, he does have foresight. He doesn't know. He's not held to time like we are. And then so the third thing that I think that God's trying to tell us, so the first thing was, same God, he hasn't changed. Second thing, when God acts, he thinks about those yet to come. The third thing, we benefit from what God did yesterday. Uh, this is kind of mentioned in 1 Corinthians when Paul says, now don't be like the Israelites when they rebelled. This happened for our instruction, for our benefit. 
well, how could something as terrible as their rebellion against God benefit us? Well, we get to learn from it. See what I mean? Even bad things God is able to use for an ultimate good good. You know what I mean. Uh, and it's like the end of uh, the book of Genesis. You know, here's, a, here's this, this guy. He's been sold into slavery by his brothers, mistreated. I mean, it, it just keeps going from bad to worse. And yet still he keeps rising above, keeps pushing on, keeps doing the best he can. He ends up as, uh, <coughs> excuse me, as Pharaoh's second in command. And then his brothers get scared. They say, oh no, he's going to remember this and he's, he's going he's gonna to kill us. And then he keeps saying this, stop, stop, stop. You were intending something for evil, but God was intending it for good. And so that brings up the very interesting question. So who sold Joseph to slavery, God or, his bro or Joseph's brothers? Now, obviously we know it was Joseph's brothers, but we also know that God didn't lose control of the situation just because it didn't hap happen exactly necessarily as we want. So that brings me to this last point here. We benefit from what God did yesterday, just like our kids will benefit from what God is doing today. And make no mistake, God is doing something today. You might not see it. You might kind of um, maybe be over your head in a problem. But that doesn't mean that God's not working. Um, a lot of times we say, God, why aren't you doing anything? Why do you think that God's not doing something? That's a much better question. What, what we need to learn instead is how to combat those voices that, that, that pop into our head and say, let's, let's criticize God for being God, and let's make it where God has to answer to me. So instead of doing that, when you have, a, have something that comes up in your head and you just can't shake it, answer it with faith instead. Um, you know, God could have stopped that. Yeah, but he didn't. So instead of saying, why didn't he? Just acknowledge the fact that he did, for instance. Well, I hope that this was helpful. Once again, those three things. It's the same God. He didn't change. He didn't go anywhere. He didn't lose his power. He didn't forget. When God acts, he also thinks about those yet to come. And then the third thing, we benefit from what God did yesterday. And so I'll read that verse one more time. When you go out to war against your enemies and see horses and chariots and an army larger than your own, you shall not be afraid of them. For the Lord your God is with you, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And I think that that same thing can be said for if you're trying, to, if you're struggling with an addiction or depression or anxiety or anything like that. Um, this is the God who brought us up out of the land of Egypt. Now you might say, well, I wasn't, I wasn't enslaved in Egypt. But once again, remember what I just talked about. So um, this is something that we can definitely see and we can definitely apply it um, to our lives and remember that God is with us as we're struggling, as we're facing our enemies, we can remember that God is with us. And uh, so I hope you guys have a great uh, weekend, weekend, uh, a great um, whatever you're doing today, <laughs> and uh, have a great rest of the day. Uh, remember to drink plenty of water. It's kind of getting hot out there. Uh, okay. All right, bye.